All right, so I am back. I took yesterday off, and I will get into that in a moment. But first, I want to kind of lay 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 out the land for what today's video entails. You have. NDP MPs federally and provincially that are not only quitting but also switching to conservatives. You have Justin Trudeau admitting his faults. You have Justin Trudeau getting swarmed by angry Canadians and you just have more testimonies of people that are having a difficult time with just basic affordability here in Canada. Welcome back to another video everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. I, and I hope you, um, you can start turning the post notifications on. It's that little bell icon that shows up once you're subscribe it just adds a layer of insurance to make sure you can actually be notified of upcoming videos so i didn't post yesterday i posted on my community tab i posted on uh my instagram i just and you probably need about two minutes to get this out so if you if you don't want to listen to this personal stuff just skip ahead two and a half minutes or whatever it is and we'll get into the video my dog my dog Rhea. she got diagnosed with cancer, a very aggressive type of cancer, uh, about 75 to 80 days ago. And I, I made a GoFundMe because she needed surgery. We successfully completed one surgery. The cancer grew back. It was even more aggressive. It was kind of like Medusa or, or whatever the hell that thing is where you cut off one and more grow. And I wasn't having any luck with finding somebody who was willing to operate again to get that done. I kept getting more opinions. And it turned out to be a bit of a death sentence um, in order for her to have the cancer removed additionally to in a second surgery she would not only have to survive the surgery but she'd have to have uh, her leg amputated and ribs removed and there's still like 99 percent chance that the cancer would grow back and so i made the decision not to put my dog through that surgery because it was l very likely to kill her with her underlying heart condition which is one of the toughest things I've had to do. And since her first surgery, give or take, um, or at least since the GoFundMe, she said, oh my God, she has had 73 days of additional life. So, oh, it's tough, it's tough. Um, thank you everybody for contributing to the GoFundMe, sharing it, uh, being supportive because she got to live an extra 73-ish days. And I owe that to you guys, the community. Um, and I, I just want to thank everybody. And yesterday, April 3rd, we put her down. We had somebody come to the house and euthanize her here in the home. Wow, what a gruesome process. Like, it was, it was clean to do that, but it was absolutely heartbreaking to just see the life leave out of your, your your dog's eyes and then throw them in the back of a vehicle bring them to the pet cemetery uh and start the cremation process um a little bit of a backstory i lived in a van for four years with my husky two years by myself with her and then two years with my additional dog so there's two dogs and me and we lived in a van similar to this and just for nostalgic reasons um, I'm hoping to have a custom urn made in the shape of my old van. I have no idea how that's done. I know that it probably shouldn't be ceramic because that could easily break and that would be devastating. But if anybody out there watching this knows how to make a custom thing like that in the shape of my old camper van, if you're, if you're able to do that, you know somebody who does that, a business, whatever, please reach out to me. My email is, um, I'll put it down in my description, but it's, it's also on my about tab of this channel because I just, I, she means a lot, man. I lived in a small space. I didn't work for like four years and uh, traveled around with, with that dog. So she's, she's like my best friend. And, um, and you people watching the community helped her live an extra 73 days. So thank you. Okay. Trudeau, fuck Trudeau, fuck Trudeau. Here we go. All right, so folks, we have an update in the polls. It's still looking exactly where it needs to be. You have the Conservatives sitting at a 210 projected seats with a bottom line of 185, top end of 229. It hasn't moved yet. It hasn't moved, but I do think the only number that will change is the number 210. I think that projection will go up. It'll slowly start to creep into 215 and to 220 over the next couple of months. I think their bottom line of 185 projected seats, I think you're going to start to see that get closer to 200 as time goes on and they're still sitting at 99 percent likely of winning the most seats and 99 percent likely of winning a majority government so everything is looking awesome and a-okay there and what's even better is you have a bc ndp mla has just crossed the floor to the conservatives 
That is wild. Absolutely insane. And she's not the only person that's doing that. This is at the provincial level. But now you have at the federal level, Charlie Angus of the NDP for up in Timmins, James Bay area. He jumped ship rather than face voters after he voted to hike the carbon tax and ban hunting rifles uh, for northern Ontario people. Now, this guy right here, Charlie Angus, he's the one that tried to come out with a actual law, a real bill that would basically give the government the right to put you in jail if you said any positive things about oil and gas. If you said, wow, this burns so efficiently, that is enough for you to go to jail. That's the guy who tried to push that bill down the Commons. So um, make like a leaf or make like a tree and F off. Is that the saying? That is awesome to see. And I'd like to know down in the comments what you guys think about this. You, more and more uh, liberal and NDP individuals, federally and provincially, are jumping shit because, one, they don't want to face the repercussions. Two, they don't want to necessarily wait till the next election because it's going to be a landslide victory for the conservatives. Or three, yeah, they just realize that they suck and it's time to get out. So... I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. Next up, you have Trudeau says so many people hate him because they're worried about their future. What a weird thing to say. The future he and his wife brought, uh, bought and paid for uh, MPs created. So let's take a look at the um, little write up here on the counter signal. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was asked during an interview on Thursday morning why so many Canadians genuinely dislike him. Trudeau is currently facing an unprecedented law in his party's support, with a 71% of all voters expressing a preference for him to step down before the next election. Why do you think people don't like you? CBC host Matt Galloway asked on his Thursday edition of The Current. I think there is a lot of frustration with the way the world is unfolding, and that frustration is being taken out on people in positions of power, Justin Trudeau responded. Galloway clapped back with, but what about you? Pointing out that he sees F. Trudeau stickers and flags everywhere he goes. Why people don't like you. Which, by the way, is a great time right now to say if you want one of these stickers of Trudeau being penetrated by Klaus Schwab or any of the bundles that I've had or any of the individual stickers, the link for that is down in the description. Trudeau called unvaccinated Canadians racist, misogynist, taking up space in an unhinged interview. Trudeau responded with, there's a level of polarization and toxicity that we see in a very visible way on social media and also in real life, as you point out. But Canadians must, rem uh, but most Canadians remain thoughtful and open and decent and yes, frustrated and worried about their future. Or, or people just, don't like you, Trudeau. I know that's like a hard thing. It's a tough pill to swallow, but people just don't like you because you're just a POS. I don't know what else to say, but Trudeau is is not he's not doing the liberals any favors. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because if we all want him to resign, we all want him to leave, make like a tree and F off, right? Problem with that is the runner-up is Christian Freeland. So if you had to pick, if you had to pick who would be a better prime minister or a worse prime minister, would it be Christian Freeland or Justin Trudeau? Please let me know down in the comments because those are the options right now unless there's an election called. Now, if Trudeau goes the distance in terms of going all the way to the next election and runs as prime minister, which he said over and over and over again that that is his full intentions, then yeah, you're going to see a landslide victory by the conservatives. I mean, there's so much hatred and momentum for disliking Justin Trudeau across the board, not only here in Canada, but internationally, there is no possible way that Justin Trudeau could pull off a victory. Now, could Christian Freeland pull off a victory for the Liberals? I don't think so. I think even more people, there's an argument to be made that even more people dislike her, but she's not the Prime Minister. She's not calling all of the main shots. She's not the sitting on the throne, so to speak. But yeah, no, I, I, I have stickers of Chrystia Freeland, Wicked Witch of the North. She's dressed like a witch and she's on a broom. The link for that is down in the description if you'd like to see that. Next up, we have Justin Trudeau getting swarmed by angry Canadians. Now, this is very important to, to cross-reference where you're getting your information. This video... This video got posted on X. Intense scenes as Justin Trudeau gets swarmed by furious mob in Hamilton, Ontario. Canadians have had enough. Now, this got 2 million views. 2 million views on X. 
And it turns out that this uh, actually got community noted. And the video was originally posted January 24th, 2023. I remember this. He went to Hamilton. He went to a few different places in Ontario. And he got hella swarmed. And they actually link the original video, January 24th, 2023, with 7.1 million views. So just something to be careful of. Uh, when you're coming across information, especially brand new information on X, yeah, I mean, th they didn't necessarily try to mislead that it was happening, uh, th that they, you know, trying to post that it was right now, but it could be taken that way. So Justin Trudeau did not get, like, yesterday, today, or this week get heckled or swarmed in Hamilton, uh, but he did a year ago. Nonetheless, let's take a look at the clip here. <laughs> And so this is becoming a bit of an ongoing problem because not not the not the the protesting and the heckling. All of these protests, they've been relatively peaceful. You haven't had any, not that I'm aware of, at least not that the public is even aware of. There has been no acts of violence, no calls of violence, no plotting, no none of that. The public is not aware of any of that. So if that's ever happened, that has been swept under the rug and it's been kept hush-hush because the public, it's not been in the media, it has not been made public at all that that, that bad stuff has ever happened. Yet, Canada is still taking all of these insane precautions or acts of intimidation and showing up with like so many cops so many cops there are so many cops here i understand that the the people are the sheer numbers of people are potentially intimidating i i get that but no one has ever done anything violent there hasn't been again there hasn't been any calls or acts or threats of violence or anything to suggest that that would ever get to that point. So it's just, it's very bizarre. And you saw this with the carbon tax protests, um, the, especially the ones in Alberta. The cops had like freaking, I don't want to say machine guns, assault rifles. They had their M16s, their C7s, issued guns, or like C7s in the military, whatever. They had all these crazy decked out gears uh, for people, like riot gear, right? Like just, it didn't make any sense. Why are the cops showing up as if they're going into battle, as if they're like the, the SWAT team and they're showing up for protesters because that's what's called a police state. When you have an overwhelming amount of police that show up to intimidate the public, that's, that's called a police state. And that's unfortunately the state of Canada right now. And it, there's a bit of a bias uh, for the protests because the police state initiative doesn't actually take place for every single protest. It's more for the right wing or the freedom movement type of protest where people have F Trudeau flags or they're protesting the carbon tax or they're just showing uh, showing up in numbers to say, you know, heck, you know, to heck you Trudeau, to heckle Trudeau in a peaceful way. Now, the police don't show up in overwhelming numbers for other types of protests such as off the top of my head, the Palestinian protests, they seem to not get the same type of treatment, which is why there's a bit of animosity between the freedom community and these Palestine protests because it's not getting the same level of treatment, but there's still an overwhelming amount of numbers that are showing up to support. And it's like, hey, man, that doesn't seem fair. There's like 15, 20 people that show up at, 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 on a road in Alberta to protest the carbon tax and there's like 30 plus cops yet there's hundreds if not thousands of uh, Palestinian supporters protesting uh, Palestine and the war in Israel or that whole conflict it, right outside of Ottawa and there's like five police officers it just seems a little bit disingenuous and a little bit one-sided so that's why if you're ever wondering why there's animosity between the two different types of protesting groups or just in general that's why Next up, we have Wall Street Silver on X saying, uh, showing a video here of somebody who says, I'm tired of being in Canada. The government is taking, is, is just taking and taking. I'm on a budget and I am tired of it. I'm a retiree. I'm packing my stuff. I sold my house. Anywhere is better than Canada right now. The cost of living uh, crisis is a joke. It's no joke. I'm tired of being in Canada because the government is just, taking and taking and taking as a retiree at 56 okay i got a good pension like i mean i got a great pension but if i do that and live here 
I'm going to be living like, you know, on a, a budget. Not a tight budget, but a budget. And I'm tired of it. Okay? So I'm packing my stuff. I sold my house. I'm going to sell my Jeep that's here, 23. Brand new Jeep. And I'm going to go and live either back home where I originally from, Portugal, or Spain, or Europe, anywhere in Europe. Don't, <laughs> don't get me wrong, anywhere is great, other than here. Even Asia. <laughs> I could live like a king over there. Sandy beaches, palm trees, blue water. Hey. But here? Uh-uh. You ain't going nowhere. So, I'd like to know if there's anybody out there that's doing the same. Like, packing your shit and just leaving. You're seeing this more and more. And I've, I've even come across people in real life, not just on the internet, that are also saying the same thing. That they're just wanting to pack up and leave because the cost it just doesn't make any sense and i've even considered moving myself and my family from bc to alberta um, because the cost of living in alberta is significantly cheaper than what it is here in bc and i i, I hate that because bc is such a beautiful place but it's also a place where you need to bring cash hence b C, it doesn't stand for British Columbia. It stands for bring cash for those who didn't know. And so I just love to know, uh, you guys, the viewers, have you ever thought about leaving Canada? If so, where would you want to go? Is there a better place out there? Please let me know down below. And finally, we've got a press conference video here saying Prime Minister Trudeau has asked if the government plans to raise taxes or introduce new taxes in order to fund new spending commitments. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, on your pre-budget tour, you made around $25 billion oh, in new spending. that smile is so annoying. Will your government be introducing any new taxes or raising any current ones in order to pay for these promises? We've made it very clear from the very minute we got elected back in 2015 that we were going to support the middle class and people working hard to join it, which is why one of the very first things we did was raise taxes on the wealthiest 1% and lower them for the middle class. We're going to continue to focus on affordability. We're going to continue to focus on putting money in the pockets of Canadians. There are no plans uh, to raise taxes on the middle class. We are focused on delivering the investments, the supports, the housing, the child care, the national food, school food program, and the jobs uh, in a growing clean economy that uh, this country needs. We have uh, one of the strongest fiscal balance books, balance sheets in uh, the G7, uh, the lowest debt to GDP ratio. Uh, we're the third largest economy in the world with a triple A credit rating. Uh, we're going to continue uh, to make fiscal responsibility at the core of what we do, even as we ensure fairness for every generation. It's just a load of crap, and you hear this so many times on repeat, like a broken record. We have a triple-A credit rating. Dude, Canada is a joke right now. Canada is a joke. You have homelessness in a way that you have never, ever seen before. You have drug addiction in a way that's it's all-time highs. If this was stock market lingo, we'd be at all-time highs, and it's time to sell, sell, sell. And we need to do something in Canada right now, or people are going to be packing up and leaving. We have immigration. That Justin Trudeau has literally admitted is a problem. We have too many people coming in. We have too many people. They're the government. They are the ones making the decision. They're literally provide. They're 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 causing the issue, and they're trying to sell the solution. That's not how a government is supposed to work. Government is just supposed to serve us, the people, and solve the issues that already exist, not make issues worse, and then tr when it comes time to re-election, try to offer more solutions. No, 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 no. You've already lost faith. Canadians have lost faith in the government. They've lost faith in the system. That's why you have people that are packing up by the hundreds and thousands and they're just leaving. So that's where I'm going to end today's video, folks. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comments. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of the topics that were brought up. And if there is somewhere that you've ever thought about going, please let me know down below. Because uh, I may have to do a little bit more market research myself. Because maybe Alberta isn't as cheap as it should be. Maybe there are better options out there. I'm just kidding. I don't plan on leaving Canada. At least 
I hope I don't plan on leaving Canada. I really like this country a lot. In fact, I love Canada. I just, I think that uh, we have one, one more real shot at fixing the government here with an upcoming election. And then if that doesn't go as planned, then it's time to, you know, reconsider things. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks that. But again, that's where we're going to end this video, folks. So on your way out, I'd really like to encourage you to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.